All right, so you've been asked to find the voltages across three capacitors that are in what we can call a combinatorial circuit. Uh, we call that a combinatorial, or this a combinatorial circuit here because we have two capacitors that happen to be in parallel with each other, and then those two capacitors together are in series with this third capacitor here. Again, you're trying to find a voltage across those three capacitors. Those three capacitors are also in a circuit with a 5 volt, volt voltage source here. And those three capacitors have values of one microfarad for capacitor number one, one microfarad for capacitor number two, and uh, 4.7 microfarads for capacitor number three. Okay. So in order to, um, before, as we begin our, our experiment here, what we're going to do is we're going to lay these capacitors out on the paper so that they represent or they, they resemble the circuit. Uh, so we have capacitor number one that's there, we have capacitor number two that's there, and we have capacitor number three, which is that 4.7 microfarad capacitor. And in this case, the 4.7 microfarad capacitor happens to be what's called a polarized capacitor. And that polarized capacitor has a negative terminal and that polarized capacitor has a positive terminal capacitor has to be connected correctly or else the capacitor could possibly explode. So the negative terminal has to be connected to the end of lower potential. So in capacitor number three here, since the voltage, the higher voltage on this capacitor is going to be on this terminal, uh, we're going to, uh, this is the positive terminal, the positive terminal should be here and the negative terminal should be here. By the time the voltage gets to this point here, it should be equal to zero volts, okay, at this specific point. So this is equal to zero volts, and this is something larger than zero volts within the circuit, okay? And so the capacitor will be connected there where this is the negative terminal and this is the positive terminal. All right, so now that we've uh, established that with our three capacitors, we're going to go ahead now and look at using a uh, breadboard to simulate our uh, circuit here. All right, and so this is our breadboard. On the breadboard, we have a positive terminal and a negative terminal that we're going to connect to our supply voltage. And then we're going to connect that also to the rest of our circuit. That positive terminal has already been connected to a bus going on here on the far left. That's going to be our positive uh, bus. And then the negative terminal has been connected to a negative bus here or a bus here that we're going to use as our negative terminal. Okay, so now to connect uh, capacitor number one, we're going to put this into the board here. And we're going to connect capacitor number two. We're going to also put that into the, the uh, board here. And capacitor number one, capacitor number two, since they're in parallel, they need to be in the same row, uh, both at the top and at the bottom. All right. And then capacitor number three. What we're going to do is, remember, the positive needs to be connected to the two capacitors, and then the negative terminal needs to be away from that. So we set that up here, as we have shown on this uh, on the on the camera here. All right. Now it's a good idea before you start working with the capacitors that you discharge any energy that's stored within the capacitors. And to do so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this wire here. In order to do that, on the wire we have an alligator clips, and what we'll do is just go ahead and clip that onto each of the capacitors one at a time, so we can make sure that we discharge the capacitor. So that's across capacitor number one right now, and just let that be for about a few seconds. All right, now we'll go ahead and connect it on to capacitor number two. And again, same thing, we'll let that be for a few seconds. Now the two capacitors were in, are in parallel with each other, so we really could have just connected one, uh, one of them and just that would have dissipated the energy across both. But for the purpose of just demonstration, we just go ahead and we'll do it on both. All right, and then we're moving on to capacitor number three. And dissipate any energy across capacitor number three here. Okay. 
All right, okay, so now we've dissipated any energy across capacitors. Let's uh, make sure we finish uh, connecting the circuit here. So the negative terminal from this capacitor needs to be connected to the negative bus. All right, so that's connected to the negative bus. And the positive terminal up here, let's use a red wire. It doesn't make a difference of color, but for demonstration purposes and clarity, let's make sure that we, we're pretty clear as to what's going on here. So that's the positive terminal is now connected to the two capacitors up here at the top. Okay. Now that we have both of those done, we're going to go ahead and connect our power supply into the terminals. And so we'll connect the positive terminal into the red here, negative terminal into the black. All right. And we're going to go ahead and supply, turn our voltage supply on. And that's going to give our circuit uh, juice, if you will. And we're going to use now a voltmeter here in order to check the voltage across the capacitor. In the voltmeter, I'm going to set it on to 20 volts. The reason I set it on to 20 volts is because the circuit has 5 volts in it. And so we know that uh, 20, we won't get more than 20 volts across any of the capacitors once we check them. Okay. Um, but at the same time, we cannot be guaranteed that we'll get uh, two or less voltages across any of the capacitors. So rather than setting it to two, I just went and be on the safe side and connect it across the uh, 20 uh, volt uh, setting there. All right. Once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the voltages that we find across capacitors. And this could be a little bit tricky on the board because sometimes the capacitor moves and also the voltmeter can also act like a resistor across capacitor and sometimes dissipate some of the voltage across capacitor. So what my suggestion would be is to find the highest voltage that you find and just write that number down. Again, this type of experiment is just pretty much for uh, demonstration purposes as to how to use a voltage supply, how to understand what components are in series and parallel. Um, it's not ideal for finding uh, or being uh, very specific about uh, our values. So we're just going to use it mostly for demonstration purposes. All right. So now that we have everything set, we have our, our voltage terminal that we're using for the red hair, common we're using for the black and we're using 20 volts across here. Let's go ahead and find our voltages across in the capacitor. So across capacitor number one, I think I see two point, what is that? 2.12 as the highest voltage. All right, across capacitor number two. Okay. Now it says 1.98, 1.89 or around there. Now the thing is though, the interesting is about this is because both of these capacitors are in parallel, really they should be about the same. But again, because we're just demonstrating how this all works, just go ahead and write the, the highest value that you found in there. And what we'll do is, of course, we'll just uh, use our experimental or percentage error to say how far it is away from theoretically what we expected. So let's check that again. Okay, so it's it's still a little bit lower. But what we found, though, is the maximum capacitance was somewhere around 1.8 or 1.9. I cannot remember, but you can go back and uh, check that out on the video when you are uh, reviewing this. All right, and then we have the... Capacitor number three here down at the bottom. And let's find the voltage across that capacitor. Oop. Okay, and I thought I saw 3.1 uh, something as the highest voltage across that capacitor. And so we'll go ahead and use that. So those are the three voltages that we found across all three of those capacitors. Okay. And so you can go ahead and use that information in order to do the... Uh, your calculations and compare against your your theoretical voltage uh, voltages versus your experimental voltages and that concludes uh, this video